Hi all, now in this video we are going to talk about test for equal variance. We'll be conducting this hypothesis test. We will see uh, where do we conduct uh, this test called uh, test for equal variance, uh, what are its uses and how to interpret uh, how to interpret result of this test. Okay, so uh, I urge all of you be before we start up with any hypothesis test, uh, uh, I, I want you to go through our AIG chart at least four or five times and you will have to ensure that you remember when when uh, uh, you must remember all the conditions for all the hypothesis tests because I'm, I'm sure now you realize that you cannot conduct all the hypothesis tests under under all the circumstances okay all the hypothesis tests comes with certain prerequisite comes with certain conditions okay so you need to understand that uh, when um, under under what circumstances which hypothesis uh, which hypothesis test uh, shall I be using all right now let's talk about test for equal variance see if you remember that AI chart uh, we conduct test for equal variance when my problem y is continuous and my potential x is discrete right so you will conduct test for equal variance only when your y is continuous your x is discrete and you are concerned with variation now the question is how shall I come to know whether I'm concerned with variation or not so I'm sure when you did the basic data analysis when you did data, uh, I mean when you did basic data analysis and when you found out whether your data is normal or not then then the second thing you did there was you found out whether your data is normal or not and then the third thing that you did was uh, you you analyze the problem whether the problem that your process is facing is that problem with centering or is that a problem of variation you found that out right now when your y is continuous when your x is discrete and and you are you you observe that the problem is with variation then you do this test called test for equal variance this test okay now the navigation path for test for equal variance would be go to stat uh, b before I tell you a navigation path I'm sure now you remember whenever we do any hypothesis test we make two assumptions we make two hypotheses the first one we'll call alternate second one we'll call null okay so understand we do this test called a test for equal variance to to check whether there is significant difference in the variance of the samples or not let's say for example my y is sales okay uh, just give me one one example yeah see here I have a data of sales okay this is the data of sales for last six months and this is monthly uh, monthly sales data for each advisor okay now I have all the other details now let's let's assume for example I want to check whether variance that is in in males and variance that is in females right are those variants approximately equal see ideally variance in males and variance in females should have been equal right because uh, just, just a second yeah see here this is your X this is your Y your Y is sales your X is uh, gender and you are interested to check uh, whether the variance uh, within males and variance within females are approximately equal or not okay so whenever you you want to test that you do this test called test for equal variance in this test your null hypothesis will always say that variance of the samples are approximately equal okay null will always say uh, there is no significant difference or say your X does not impact Y and alternate will say that variance of the samples are significantly different from each other okay alright so see here 
alternate hypothesis will say see whenever you are conducting uh, a test for equal variance you will have to understand that null hypothesis will say that variance of all the samples are approximately equal and alternate hypothesis will say variance of samples are not, not 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 equal variance of the samples are rather significantly different from each other okay now how does that help us let's say I'm concerned with the variation that okay in, in my sales I see huge variation and I'm concerned with variation I want to check uh, what is what is a factor w what is uh, the potential factor that is making the variation of my y uh, higher or larger right I'm willing to find that particular factor so that I can work on that and I can reduce variation of my overall y so uh, my first x was gender and in gender there were two subgroups first one was males and, and second second one was female so uh, using test for equal variance I can find out whether there is any significant difference in the variance of males or females or not if there is no significant difference that means gender has no significant impact on my problem Y in terms of variation if I find that say variation of males uh, are significantly higher than females or say uh, 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 va va variation variance of females uh, 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 is, is, is quite much high or say significantly high from males then then we say that yes gender has impact on the on the sales of my process now what is what do you mean by significant difference so see that's not our job minute I will find that out uh, using hypothesis test that whether there is significant difference or not now let's see how we conduct this test so whenever you want to conduct uh, this test for equal variance the navigation path would be go to stat in stat go to ANOVA and then go to test for equal variance you can see here stat ANOVA test for equal variance this is the path you will have to choose now go to test for equal variance you see here response response always means your why your project why your problem why my problem is sales I want to improve my sales I'm concerned with variation present in my sales okay and I'm taking factor as gender okay factor my X is gender now uh, uh, title uh, say very variance test okay just do okay and now uh, you can see a diagram out here okay now I'll, I'll tell you how to interpret this this diagram but you can see here we got two p-values okay the first p-value is here first p-value is p-value of F test and second p-value is p-value of Levine's test <laughs> Now the question is, which which p-value should you look at? Should you look look at the p-value of F test, or should you look, look at the p-value of, uh, uh, say, Levine's test? Which p-value which p-value would you look at? So the answer is, to know which p-value should you look at, you need to have information that whether your problem y uh, is normal or not. That means whether distribution of your y is normal or not I'm sure in basic data analysis itself you have, fo you have found out whether your data is normal or not so whenever your data is normal look at the p-value of this F test sometimes you won't see F test here sometime uh, sometimes instead of F test you will see Bartlett test but here you'd, you'd, you'd always see Levine's test okay so go with Levine's test once your data is non-normal and go with F test or Bartlett test that you can see here when your data is normal okay so if your data is normal then you would look at p-value of uh, F test or Levine's test I'm sorry F test or Bartlett test and then you will decide whether you should go with null hypothesis or you should go with alternate hypothesis if your p-value is greater than 0 0.05 you would go with you would go with a uh, uh, null hypothesis and if your p-value is smaller than 0 0.05 then you would go with alternate hypothesis at, at this point in time both 
p value of f test and living test is greater than 0.05 that means uh, you would go with null hypothesis null hypothesis says that variance of both males and females are approximately equal that means i would say there is no significant difference in the variance of the samples okay now let's look at something else I told you that here, uh, here you you would always see living test only, okay? But in this box, you may you may see F test or you may see Bartlett test. Now that depends on how many subgroups you have. If you just have two uh, two subgroups, as in case of gender, you would see F test out here. But if you have more than two subgroups, you would see you would see Bartlett test out here. For example, see in gender you just had two subgroup males and females so you had uh, f test out here suppose i'm taking uh, a different x uh, x called shift and in shift i have three shifts let's say morning shift evening shift and night shift okay so when i have when i have three shifts in that case uh, i have more than two subgroups so you will see bartlett here L let's try once let's go to stat uh, anova let's go to test for equal variance and instead of gender just change gender by shift okay you see your bartlett because we have three subgroups evening morning and night the same rule applies here which p-value to look uh, whether you should look at p-value of bartlett or levine the answer is first find out whether your problem y uh, has normal distribution or non normal distribution if it's if if it has normal distribution you should look at the p value of either bartlett test or f test in case if your distribution is non normal you should look at the p value of levine's test so now before we find out uh, whether uh, uh, say uh, uh, we, we should look at p value of levine or bartlett let's find out whether our uh, distribution is normal or not Okay, so let's go to uh, ANOVA, let's go to, uh, just a second, yeah, test for equal variance, no, 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 uh, I was willing to check normality first, whether the distribution of my population is normal or not. So I would go to basic stat, I would go to normality and understand, we always do normality test for our project Y, okay, so go to normality, select your sales, and then you don't have to change anything out here because Anderson Darling test is the strongest test we have uh, you can if you want you can choose Ryan Joyner or Kolmogorov Smirnov but at this point in time I would like to go ahead with Anderson Darling because this is one of the strongest tests that, that we have for normality okay CRP value P value of your uh, of this no normality test is greater than 0 0.05 that means I would go with null hypothesis and in case of normal distribution if you remember null hypothesis says that your distribution is normal so in this case my distribution is normal so I will just look at either p-value of Bartlett or p-value of F test so I would go to ANOVA go to test for equal variance shift okay I will look at p-value of Bartlett test. This Bartlett test says that uh, there is no significant difference in the variance of the samples because it's greater than 0.05. So I would go with null hypothesis and null hypothesis always says that there is no significant difference in the variance of the samples. That means variance of these all three shifts evening, morning and night is approximately equal. Let's do one more, one more test. Let's go to ANOVA test for equal variance. Okay and instead of shift let's use education okay see here I had three education graduate postgraduate undergraduate okay and I know distribution of my Y that is uh, sales is normal so I would look at p-value of Bartlett test which is 0 0.541 that means my uh, my uh, I mean education of, of my employees do not have significant impact on the sales of the process okay variance of all these three education groups are almost same all right now let's look at what is this do you see here one line one range and and you see here one one dot okay so i'm, I'm sure now you have gone through our video on confidence interval 
okay so what is confidence interval confidence interval is nothing but this is a range of values this is a range for a population parameter okay population parameter means it can be population mean it can be population median it can be population variance it can be population standard deviation at this point in time we are checking for variance of the samples we are we are testing variance right so uh, this 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 range essentially so essentially shows that uh, population variance for graduate employees is uh, is between lies between uh, 2254.27 dollars till 3591.85 dollars that means uh, variance of graduate population ranges between 2500 i'm sorry 2254 to 3591 similarly variance for postgraduate population ranges between 23003 dollars 6 to $7,693.56 this is the range of population variance for postgraduate people Similarly, for undergraduate, the the population, the population variance lies between uh, one thousand seven hundred and seventy nine dollars seventy five cents to five thousand five hundred and forty six dollars thirty seven cents. And what is its significance? You see here, this is overlapping. Uh, this confidence interval for graduate, uh, postgraduate, and undergraduates are overlapping to an extent. Okay, so whenever uh, uh, I mean uh, this confidence interval for two or more subgroups overlaps uh, uh, most likely you will see that there's no significant variance in the in the in the uh, in the uh, population parameter there is there's no significant difference in the variance of the samples okay and and, and, and in most of the case when when you when you see that at least one of the uh, uh, this confidence interval uh, is not overlapping with any one of others then you will see that your p value will come in most of the times your p value will come less than 0 0.05 okay in in case if you have hard time understanding what i'm talking about then i would request you to go through our video on confidence interval okay because p value is always calculated on the basis of the same thing uh, whether uh, your uh, in, in this case whether your confidence interval of all, all the subgroups are uh, are overlapping or not if if it overlaps then there is there is more likely uh, there is more chance that uh, there is no significant variance in the in the uh, in the uh, variance of the samples because see here uh, its variation the variation of graduate is between 2254 to 3591 it is 2303 to 7693 it's overlapping both are overlapping and similarly it, it, it it's also overlapping okay so because all these three confidence intervals are overlapping so most likely uh, you will see your p value will come uh, greater than 0 0.05 see here okay now uh, I'm sure uh, now you know how to calculate uh, how to uh, conduct this test on uh, on uh, uh, test for equal variance okay and how to interpret the result and and when should you l uh, do this uh, test called test for equal variance uh, I had a data which which was normal but in real life it's it's really tough to find normal data in in, in real life you'll just find you know most of the times you'll find non normal data right so there in, in, in such cases you you will not look at the p value of bartlett test rather you would look at the p value of levine's test okay all the interpretation would be same just you would look at the p value of levine's test in this case because i had normal data so we we looked at the p value of bartlett test that's the only difference while looking at p value hope this this session for uh, test for equal variance was useful in in case if you have any question uh, do write to us thank you